Hello everyone, my name is Romat and today we're going to do a Tulia mid guide in ranked in at around 100 LP, well 80 LP in Grandmaster because this was before I reached 100 and uh, for this game, uh, if you will read the title, I was basically queued as top mid and so the system decided, okay you go mid and generally when you play on your secondary role on our field you kind of have to have a simpler lane because theoretically that's how it should be correct me if i'm wrong but the system should practically decide okay you're not on your main role so just stop because you know now that a q has stop mid uh well as you, because you don't mid well let's give you not the best of the not the best player in team for the mid lane so uh, this is a good tactic for when you are also able to play other lanes so if you are playing Tilia bot let's say you could queue as bot and mid and then when you get onto the mid lane field you basically have a simpler time now today we're going to do a grandmaster carry game um i believe this was one of my best games in like past 30 for mid especially because i haven't played mid in a while i can't even remember when was the last time that i played this good on mid i had great games on top similar to this but um if they even called me a freaking smurfer it, i'm they seen i'm grandmaster and i told them i'm at pick elo i don't have to lie guys i've never been challenger this is my pick elo they talked they, they told me in chat you can't see it because it's a freaking uh, replay but they said that i was smurfing and i shouldn't be playing here what come on this is my elo so basically it's a game where we are against uh, some grandmaster and some diamond ones um you also have some grandmaster and some diamond ones in our team this is the elo well on europe nordic and east if you don't know uh he scared me here <laughs> that's why i reacted like that and europe nordic and east if you don't know a uh, grandmaster put you get your master exactly after you win first game in master it's not like on europe west where you need a uh, 200 lp or on korea when you probably need more more to reach grandmaster so that's why i say grandmaster instead of master but i consider myself a grandmaster at around 100 lp i would have probably said master if i was like 10 0 10 50 lp somewhere there but i like to i like to brag with it because well it's kind of an achievement even if you feel like most people are average at the game obviously because that's the average thing and they are gold and platinum and they think whoa uh, i am gold platinum and people say being platinum for example is not high elo or diamond but that's stupid because that's literally the 5 to 10% of the players of the game. So basically if you are platinum 1 or diamond, you are better than most players at the game. 80%, you're better than 80% of players at the game. You are theoretically by statistics high elo. Now if because some other people trash you don't mind you, don't mind them. Don't just don't bother. You are good at the game if you are above, I don't know, gold or silver. Even above silver you are probably decent at the game. You just probably got to do macro and micro. So for to learn that. So for today's video, we're going to do a Talia mid guide in which we'll play against Lux. She has Barrier and Arcane Comet. We have Hecarim on our team and Sona Karma. Uh, this comp is pretty strong because Hecarim on its own is very strong and Sona Karma, Sona Janna, Sona Lux. It's also a very strong thing uh, because it's quite conservative with the amount of heals. And shields that you have and so let's start with runes i'm playing with electrocute chip shot eyeball collection ravenous hunter presence of mind cup degrees and these rune stats i'm pushing as you can see aggressively because i know for a fact that i can't really be killed by fiddle early on and they have to hit uh, basically he has to flash and fear me or lux has to flash and kill me and that's pretty hard and i'm playing aggressively in terms of going towards here now they have a vision word here they have a vision word here, but I didn't know that. I went, I didn't go to the bush. So if you look at this, it's not even, it's not intentional put here. I didn't know of this word, but I put it here because, okay, I, this this would be far, far enough for them. Because generally he might use red finger around, right? So when you were, if you if you see this, it's kind of enough. You could go here, but if I were this here, he would have seen me. Uh, I would have lost much more time in CS, and probably Lux would have come to defend this. And yeah, for items, I'm playing with GLP into Orb, um, most likely Morello, because when you are against Yumi, you have to go for Morello. In this game, we're against Yumi, against Senna, against Fiddlesticks, against the Conqueror Camille. There are three champions that heal a lot, and the fourth one that also heals not that much but still heals with conk because conqueror we all know it's a pretty strong room for healing and so yeah i missed the cannon obviously you still can carry if you miss the cannon i believe that's one of my main uh, mistakes and the primary fact that i the primary mistake that i do when i play league of legends now i went here i tried to steal this 
uh, I didn't in proper uh, and I had to flash out. That's okay, that's decent mistake but nothing, uh, nothing impossible and as you can see she poked me, I don't care, uh, she doesn't have kill pressure so I'm pretty much safe. I will recall, I tried to get the kill on Fiddle, I didn't, uh, I didn't got it, I risked the flash, it's fine, only when Fiddle is level 6 they, they will probably have real kill pressure or if you have a ROM. Now we see Hecarim getting caught here and I just jump onto the Lux, we also see that she did the barrier so if I had flash here we would have killed her. And so we just we just go here uh, and he escapes as well. So this was my mistake, obviously for flashing there, but we still won it regardless because they don't really have, how can I say, they don't really have early game champions that are very strong or prior champions. Uh, they have Lux and the Fiddlesticks and we have STR jungler and the decent mid laner which can get pre early on. Lux can get pre early on as well, but she has to kind of play more aggressive and against Sekarim you, uh, you, you can't really do that. If I keep the wave at the middle, it's fine for me. Okay, we're going back to mid lane. We haven't done much now besides miss missing flash and getting hit by Qs and missing cannons. We haven't done much right now because it's 0-0. Zero, zero. But you're going to see that this game starts to uh, roll in our favor and I will start to do great things later on. We put a word here. We start to move towards the bot lane, okay? We see here Fiddlesticks. I don't have flash, but I can just do a full combo. I will miss the W, but it doesn't matter. I could just do a full Q here and get the kill onto the Fiddlestick 1 versus 1. That was simple. I knew he had no flash because he just used it, so he had a hard time escaping. This is also a teleport from Camille. I ulted because I wasn't sure that I would have lived. And so we just turn back. We start fighting here. Hecarim gonna get ulted, but it's not necessary that he will die. So we just backed off as a team. That went well. I am behind in farm. And that's understandable, and I haven't even healed to full HP. So, uh, you might wonder or ask why am I playing with uh, Electrocute and not Dark Harvest for this particular game? Well, in general, you never know when the Fiesta is going to happen, and I don't want to risk it uh, for the Fiesta to not happen and then to be with one stack of Dark Harvest. And I would have probably had like 5 stacks, 10 stacks in minutes. 15 or so but it would have been a risk because you don't know before game that okay so we position ourselves here we see the yumi we do a full combo on yumi we don't get the kill right now okay we got it now it wasn't instant because i did um i did the q probably small a small mistake towards the positioning of the q but in general if you find the yumi pick you will probably have to follow because you're going to get eventually and with karma and sona we get a lot of cc on bot because of her sona's alt and karma's w not that much as on a let's say leona jinx or leona caitlin or something like that but you still get a lot of sustain and i knew that if you wanted to win this either me hecari moriori would have had to be fed because we have two supports basically on bot lane and so we move here towards the bot lane we see another fight okay we dodge the senna spell we go into position and we see also that fiddlestick got killed and now we just wait for the minion wave because we can get here a free kill but as you can see, Karma caught the player here. We also get the Yumi. Let's just back off. Let's see. I wanted, I positioned myself as such because I believed that Senna wouldn't be that bad to get hit by the Karma W. And so I was ready to wait for the minion wave because I knew we would have him 4 versus 3 in this context, in any context basically, because basically because uh, he was dead. But here I did not understand. Karma just got the free kill here. Yumi should have backed off towards the tower. She jumped back in. And this is not an ordinary Yumi. She has probably high win rate. I'm not sure why, what, what was that decision. Here is a free kill for Lux. Uh, Sona didn't barrier in time. She would have lived most likely. And we position ourselves here. We see a free opening on the Lux. We position ourselves out and we don't get the kill. We did get the full combo. We don't get the kill. We move towards the Fiddlestick. As you can see, I'm playing so much in the enemy jungle. I'm staying here because I really want to counteract the Fiddlesticks. If you look here, I could just do this. Okay. And so we will just we will just chase here. We will just chase. We are zoning the Fiddlesticks away from the rest of his team. We fight these guys. We don't really have any risks. Okay. Another flash from the Karma. Another easy kills onto them and the game is over. As you can see the heals, how insane they are. And let's just let's just analyze what went wrong for them. 
I believe this was a very very good example of an ult. If he does 6 around here with all tap, my um, Karma and my uh, Hecarim are doing Drake around here. They have a plant if they need it and Sona is also coming. Yorick has teleport up but for some reason doesn't matter and he probably shouldn't because we really do we're doing fine. It's also pretty much a 3 versus 2 until Senna reaches. And so I seen that they had the word here, they just took it, right? So this means we could try to zone them away, we could try to jump on them and secure a free drake, that was my intention. So I jumped here, I didn't care about them, I knew I would leave, and Fiddlestick ulted in. That was proper timing for us. That was really unfortunate for them, because, uh, well, not quite unfortunate, because he's seen the ult coming probably before he cast it, I'm curious about that. I'm saying it's not unfortunate, because it's probably this decision, his decision, to ult exactly on top of the wall. Let's just see if I cast it before. Okay, so I casted the wall and he decided he decided to ult in here. He would have probably even been interrupted if he wouldn't position it like this. He probably didn't even know that uh, I would jump here on top of them. So, Lux threw a simple Q here for some reason. It's very hard to hit the Talia. Don't do that. Also, look how nice I'm flying here towards them. Man, we need the LAC camera spectator if you know how well they do them. We need it here also so Lux just threw the Q Lux just threw the Q that's that's not good for them she should have just waited because I wouldn't have died because I have flash and I would have flashed out but I wouldn't have killed them either probably if she kept her Q I should have flashed the Q so I am zoning here their mid laner and their ADC I deal a huge ton of damage towards them they deal with the fiddlesticks he didn't got much we would have still got the drake even if Hecarim was dying there and then we start fighting the Senna because Senna early on is not that strong Senna early on is quite weak so Karma flashed in we get another full combo on them another easy kills two easy kills I am already 6-0 to it a 600 bounty I already know that I have to keep that bounty on top of me for a longer time and I also know that I could easily die towards the fiddlesticks and Lux full CC combos and flash from fiddlesticks if so if it happens. So I'm playing with vision words, I'm trying to I'm trying to go here and we do hear a bad fight. I will throw the bounty here if I recall correctly. And it's not necessarily a bad fight uh, because you'll see what happens but basically we in tier a bit but then the miracle of Yorick happens and and uh, he flashes for fiddlesticks he turns around onto the Lux uh, he doesn't die to the Lux he gets some uh, healing back from that and gets a triple kill this is where the game ends even though Camille or Lux no, I don't remember got a shot down on me that was my mistake that was probably the only mistake clear mistake that I've done because that bounty was huge even though that happened <laughs> Yorick with three kills Huge bounty will just carry the game every single time because he will be a monster and split push and Camille will probably have absolutely no chance to deal with him even though she has Trinity Force ready. Even in that case, probably there is no chance. Also, I'm getting ganked again by the Camille. It's okay, I got the kill onto the Lux. Uh, I had no bounty on me this time. It doesn't matter, we got the kill. Still, I inted two times in a row now, so we should probably focus on ganking bot more. And that's really okay because the score is 13-4 and with this much heal Camille can't really carry. I'll be honest, with this much heal Camille can't really carry. And this is a fight in which uh, we don't do that well, but let's just see on bot real quick. Probably Karma just went and yeah, and then Sona just got the kill. Look how broken this is! Look how broken this is! They have infinite sustain. Also, I don't think they get an executioner for some time okay so we go back to mid we are 7 to 68 CS I don't really care about the CS that much because I have 9 kill participation also I get here the full combo look how simple it is look how simple it is when you're ahead with Talia look at that just remember how to do this what did I do oh I pressed backspace right 50 seconds back look how simple it is I move around here to try to get uh, a bit away from the vision so I don't get spotted, but I see Lux coming in, okay, full combo, even if she threw Q I would have still hit that, Didn't she didn't have time to react, she didn't have any reaction at all, even if she reacted with more than that she couldn't have done unless she dodged that, but it's very hard to dodge when you hit the GLP, it's very hard to dodge when you hit the GLP, so we got that, 
We don't really know where Fidel is, so that's why I'm playing like this. But we can go bot again. Why? I didn't click that. We go bot again. Again, full combo, simple. Didn't hit it because she was hidden. But look, the pathing. I, I was done on mid. I led the wave in a neutral position. I got this. I was looking, well, where is this, where is this guy? Is? Well, okay. Just cast that. She dodged it pretty nicely. But then, well, Hecarim happened. And so we got another free kill. We get here the golems. We see this uh, vision word here. We also know that Lux is around. And I forgot to click on myself again. We see now on mid that Lux repositions herself towards the mid lane. We see also a scuttle here. So, uh, Hecarim engages here but escapes with ult. And they didn't even get plates for it. For that. Okay, I missed that because I hit on the minions. But they didn't even get played. So we zoned that. We went like this, this deep. Okay, this is a free kill on him. We went this deep because we wanted to zone the plates. And we did it correctly. Also, we haven't got... We, we did get the first tower though. Uh, okay, one more kill here. Sorry that I was spacing out. Let's just rewatch that. So we knew Fiddlesticks got the kill here. Okay, we knew that. I knew also I have ult, but I knew I know I can't really jump on him instantly because there is uh, the threat of Yumi Lux. But we know we know that he could probably be around here and try Drake, so we reposition ourselves as here. We also know he has no ult. We spot him here. We do the full combo, instant kill. He had no reaction time. Yorick is here. Their mid laner had no reaction time either. But we still, we still would have got the kill unless he warded here, unless he checked it. I would have had flash to escape and we move here and this is this is a crucial this is a crucial moment look at this hold we know yorick is around here we know that we have vision on this so we position ourselves here we know also that as far as i remember lux has flash but she flashed in this way because she couldn't have probably flashed this entire zone i'm not sure if she could but yeah right now we got a double kill here i'm not sure she could have flashed the entire distance that was a pretty good yorick uh, spell there so let's just see again the zoning we knew she was there, we knew Yorick would have casted that spell. She should have reacted much faster, but uh, I suppose you could also flash there. And I don't think she's filled. I'm not sure she's filled, even though the strategy should still count with playing top mid and when you're on mid you'll have this kind of uh, this kind of reaction. So I'm 10-2-4, Yorick is 5-0. I'm not ahead in CS, I am ahead in levels though. Two levels ahead, we also have a Hecarim that once he gets that dance game speed much over and in this game if we get magic resist they have 3 AP a Senna that doesn't deal that much damage also again just 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 look at that just what did I do I position myself here so I'm out of the vision and then we see again the karma setup beautiful karma setup they are CC'd I know I can't get instantly the kill super instant combo 12 to 4 this is the moment where they start calling me a smurf and they start AFKing because I am six in 16 kills out of 21, 12 plus 4. Quick maths right there. Also, we start to position ourselves much more aggressively because we have this insane vision control done by the double word comp uh, that our team has. We also notice Senna here. We wait a bit more because someone might come. I thought Fiddlesticks would try to come. And then we... I thought she would go there. I should have probably cornered her to here and get the free kill. And then I waited here because I really hoped someone would come to push. And then I see my team fighting and they got caught uh, royally here. <laughs> That's mainly their mistake for trying to engage this fight for absolute no reason. I already got a kill uh, and they do generally fine but he will die as well. But the purpose, the most important thing is that I haven't give, given there another 600 gold bounty. They came back a bit into the game, but again, if my jungler and my top laner get some magic resist as they do here, Senna is very behind, Camille can't really team fight against uh, this comp, against my E and against stuff like that. So yeah, we I ult here, let's just notice how this happens. I ult here and then I get instantly caught. But I position myself properly so that I don't die. Then we catch the Camille, we get the easy kill, and then we keep chasing. So that was a good engage from us. That The game was still over, I can't say it wasn't. But when I participate in the fight, you can see how they happen. Lux should have probably hit the Q here properly, and I would have probably been dead. Let's just see what happens with her Q. If she threw Q here, if she threw the Q here, 
before the flash and Yumi ulted faster, I would have died most likely. But because I caught the Camille with my full combo, because I did that, then the fight was over. Camille is the only one in their team who has kills, 5 kills, and then the rest of them are just squishy and very very weak. So we got that for free, Fiddlesticks was far away. I think Fiddlesticks is pretty much pissed at that point. We get here parts of the base, we start moving into the base, we go as deep as we can. Fiddlesticks try to do something there, but again, 21 kills participation out of 27. I move myself, as you can see, always in the jungle when I'm ahead. Always in the jungle, always waiting for the next big kill, as an assassin does. I've, I've yet another vision word here, I put this game like 5 vision words, if I recall correctly. So whenever you're ahead, whenever you're this stupidly ahead, you can easily go for tons of vision words. You can easily, easily go, look, 1 vision word, 2 vision words, 3 vision words, also deep vision here from both supports. Also, you can see I'm zoning them from Baron. Fiddlesticks is also far away. I'm trying my best to zone them. And this Baron pretty much secures the game, even though we also won it from a long time ago because of the gold 10k gold difference, as you can see. And yeah, I'm not going for Rabanos, by the way. I went straight for Morelomicon because we need it. And then I wanted to go for Zonia because Camille would probably want to catch me. And that's the logistic for this game. Also, free Yumi ult, we just back off. Fiddlesticks positioned himself properly. Camille jumped in the pit as well. They, they trigger it. They have a good combo. Look at their setup. Look how good was their setup here. In theory, if they weren't so behind, they should have hard win this. In theory. They are winning this, but not that as they would expect. They Early on, they did win it. But because Camille can't really carry solo, we just turn it around. I died there giving a huge bounty, but it didn't matter. Also... These minions get both towers. You can see how broken their combo is if they wouldn't int this early. And I practically done my job and secured the win in the first 15 minutes as I should have. If the score would have been 15 to 15 so to say here. We would have probably reached minute 35 or 40 until Hecarim and Yorick would have been that tanky. Also you can notice because they are behind, they didn't really go for any anti heals and we have Hecarim, we have Yorick, we have Sona, we have Karma with Redemption, we have 4 champions that heal a lot, they didn't respect us as we did with Morlimicon, with Tormail, things that apply reviews once, they didn't, they didn't respect us that much because they don't have any. And basically, because they are behind, probably they didn't bought it, because if you are ahead, you would be able to get that uh, item. 800 gold on ADC is... Senna should have bought it. But look at how strong this combo is. 5-man Fiddlestick ult into 4-man... Uh, into 4-man Lux ult into Camille zone, into Yomi heals, into Senna ult. They should have won this 5 times out of 5 times whenever gold was even. We would have stand, stood a chance there, but because Yorick is so stupidly strong and ahead, I should have also lived here. I also should have lived, I just hit it here, but it doesn't matter. As I told you, it doesn't matter, we get the soul also soon. They buff the Nexus open because of the fight, and I just wait for me to revive, and we're gonna run it down and end it. Hopefully I clicked on Talia, not on Hecarim, yes. You can see my build Zonia for this kind of fights, because Zonia helps you greatly into the Camille, Lux, Fiddlesticks, Senna. They had a good comp. I would dare to say they had the better comp, but I would say the players were better in our team generally. If the players were even in skill, I would say until the mid to late game they should have won very hard. And then we should have turned the game around, but on bot they inted Fiddlestick inted as well. And Lia did her job, I'm, uh, that's me, <laughs> so see the Zonia here. I had to do that, I had to roam over the Fiddlesticks and over the bot lane, because if I wouldn't, and if you had, let's say, some... Let, if you had Syndra on mid lane, let's just say, the roams weren't that prevalent, sometimes you wouldn't even get the kill, and their heals and shields might have stopped my burst, because I would have had only the ult for burst. Now, because I played Talia, I have burst at every single combo. Because I played Talia, I have better roam than a Syndra, let's say. If I were an assassin, that's not roamer, so let's say Diana, because Diana likes to split push a lot. The game might have been harder against these many shields and against the Camille that split pushes. So, in the context in this game, Talia, Field Talia actually worked pretty damn well. A Twisted Fate would have worked, an Orleans Soul would have worked. Maybe an Artillery Mage would have worked, but the poke would have been get cancelled. 
Uh, Talon would have worked, certainly Kiana champions that have uh, roaming potential and their assassins would have worked as well. But if I went AD, they would have probably stacked more armor because then Sona Karma doesn't really have that much AP damage. They have AP damage, but not as a Velkos. Sorry. Not as a Xerath. They have support things in them. They do have AP damage, but not enough. So I believe this champion pick was great. The game was pretty much carried. The kill participation was insane. 29 out of 36. What's like 90 almost? So all in all, this went great for me. And I, this secured me 80 LP, 85 LP in Grandmaster. I will also continue, I promise, in September to make more Grandmaster type videos on top lane. And if you have any suggestions, guys. Any suggestions. I'm also thinking of making under 6 minutes guides or under 8 minutes guides guides for Rihanna, for Talon, for champions that I still am able to play at a higher level. I practiced a bit Talon in Diamond 2, the, around Diamond 2 on West right now, because I uh, want to try it there before I jump on my main account, which is basically this. And we're going to try to go Challenger if we can, if we are able with Lia top, because that's what motivates us right now. That's what we like on Talia, and that's what we believe it's strong. I would honestly rate it Talia top first, then... Uh, well, I would rate it Talia top support and ADC honestly first. Because there is that Talia support OTP that also does finding Grandmaster. But I'm not sure, I'm not sure if bot lane has the same impact as top lane, because in theory, if you win top lane, or if you at least hold it, and then you go with the level advantage, with the gold, high farm onto the mid game fights, and you do a proper combo, you are doing fine. On uh, bot, you do have the advantage of playing with Dark Harvest. Dark Harvest support, Dark Harvest ADC is very strong, and I would try it on top, but on top there isn't that much fight. On mid, for example, for this game, it would have been best. Dark Harvest, also for, also for team fighting, but on top generally you don't have that many fights, because if you don't destroy the enemy opponent, then then you, let's just say you use Ignite, you proc Dark Harvest, but you don't get the kill because he somehow flashes out and escapes. Well then you have, for one minute you don't have Dark Harvest, and for three minutes you don't have Ignite. Most likely you're going to struggle, at least when you have Electrocute you can E, Q, E, or E, Auto Attack, E, or Q auto attack Q, auto attack or simply through auto attacks because they are ranged, you are ranged most of the time and they are melee and so you have the advantage on mid lane, shorter lanes uh, really struggle, really stop you from that and on bot if you're against the Caitlyn ban it, just ban the Caitlyn, if you're against tank supports and you don't have a tank support it's going to be rough but you do have large damage, you most likely will be able to out damage the enemy ADC in overall in the game and that's what matters, they will start to out damage you only mid to late game and if you have in mid game some Dark Harvest sucks, you will probably scale to the late game and out damage the enemy ADC. Especially since if you ban Kate, you're going to be decent. But against aggressive ADCs, such as Tristana, it can become very difficult, so play with Exhaust. And ex Exhaust Ignite should be the combo. Also, on jungle and mid, I believe it's the hardest to win right now with her, unless you duo with someone who's extremely good and camps your lane or helps you in the jungle. So if you play jungle, you play with a Mio mid champion that has Prio, such as Zed, let's say, such as. Uh, Talon maybe, something like that, or if you play with, on mid lane you'd want a champion like Rengar or Kha'Zix to help you, or a tank, a Zac, a Zac would be great, be great, or Ramos would be great, uh, there are other picks as well. So this was the guide, I really hope you enjoyed it, and I believe we carried this game pretty nicely. See you next time guys, have a nice day, night, or wherever you are, and I really hope you win your next games, and I really hope you enjoy these kind of videos. Suggest to me if you want, or if you have any suggestions, in the description, so I'm open up for them. And also, uh, join my Discord, if you want to have some Tilia discussion, if you want to look at our memes or our news or whatever we have about it's the standard discord type with uh, Tilia focus discussion and art and stuff like that see you next time guys i really love you so much goodbye